This video serves as a review of the cardinal cut and as a presentation of my edit and interpretations of the films. Since this is a review of the Cardinal West edit of the Hobbit movies, I absolutely suggest that you go and watch this video first if you haven't already. It is exceptionally well done, and you should watch it to get a better understanding of what I will be covering in my video. The link is in the description and the pinned comment. Again, I will ask that before viewing my version of The Hobbit that you already own or have access to an official copy of the original Hobbit trilogy. I will not go into the ethics of the situation, but I will warn you that refusing to support the official right holders will result in them becoming far more hostile towards fan projects such as these in the future. No, the films aren't the greatest by any means. But for my sake and the sake of other creators, do your due diligence, please, and thank you. So if you would like to download my version, all you will have to do is go to my Discord, which is linked below. There you can select the red triangle role under Rules and Roles. Then you will have access to the Subscriber Only section, where there is a channel with the download links in different versions. There will also be a description and a guide on how you can view and download my edits. Now as to why, out of the blue, a primarily Destiny creator decided to spend two weeks of his life editing his version of The Hobbit. A few months ago, I stumbled across Cardinal West's video where he went back and recut The Hobbit trilogy into a single four hour film, and the video was done excellently. And it got me intrigued into the prospects of editing out all the filler that was crammed in these films to stretch the initially planned two into three. But what had truly inspired me to create my own edit was when I had actually gotten around to watching his. By no means was it bad, but there were definitely some odd decisions made to save on time. Goals and interpretations. Let us talk about goals first. For his edit, Cardinal West intended to cut the three films into one, where it would be as accurate to the books as he could with the materials available to him and he most definitely achieved his goals, and there is nothing wrong with his interpretation and edit of the films. If you come away from my video and still decide that his edit is more to your liking, I fully support your decision. My edit is not superior to his, as we both had different goals when it came to our edits, as I will explain. As for my edit, my goals were 1. To build it upon the Ultra HD, the 4K release of The Hobbit, meaning that I will likely only be the second person to have done so. And for reference, the Cardinal Cut is built on the 1080p Blu-ray version. Two, I would make it ultra wide friendly because despite the film being in a 235 ratio, many of the other Hobbit edits were rendered in 16x9. And by rendering the film in this incorrect ratio, it creates black bars on the side for ultra wide monitor users, as shown by this demonstration. And as an ultra wide owner, this can be very frustrating. Three, like most other edits, I plan on cutting out as much unnecessary material as I can, while four, maintaining the pacings of scenes by trying to make cuts as seamless as possible. So let's talk about the differences. As you can tell, my goals are very different in comparison to the Cardinal West edit. I focus on the flow of scenes to make it much easier for first time watchers or those who haven't seen the movies in a long while, while his interpretation is excellent for those who just want to get to the good parts of the movie and can fill in the gaps created by some of the more significant cuts. For comparison, his film is only 3 hours and 35 minutes long, mine is 4 hours and 18 minutes long, both without the credits. My edit is about 45 minutes longer, mostly from my inclusion of some of the aspects of the Battle of Five Armies and uh, some other smaller areas throughout the films. So as to why I chose to do two movies in comparison to his single for the Cardinal Cuts, one, because of length. It is much easier to get away with three and a half hours versus a four hour film. I also believe because that there were initially only two films, the first being An Unexpected Journey and the second There and Back Again, splitting them into two smaller, more manageable movies to me was the right choice. And second, that is file size. If you have seen my other work, you know that I hold visual quality in high regard, and it is why I chose the Ultra HD release for my edit. The only problem is that the result for the two films is a combined file size just short of 40 gigabytes. 
by splitting them into two movies, it will make it them easier for you to download. But still, you don't have to worry because there is another option for a lower quality HD version that is half the file size available on the Discord page if you so choose. And three, because I wanted to add my own title for the second movie. Alright, so as to the actual review of the Cardinal Cut and the differences I made for my edit, as alluded to earlier, I had just a few problems with the Cardinal Cut. Mostly that some of the cuts are just jarring and come out of nowhere. Most of the cuts are executed very well in the film and help reduce much of the filler that was packed into them. Others not too great. Some I understand were because of time but still removed some good parts of the movie. Some that harmed the scene and didn't change much anyway. And some that just don't work in practice. And of course, spoilers. To inform you that there are spoilers ahead if you would like to watch either edit on your own first. And I will tell you that I won't be covering every difference between the two movies because there are many that I've made for personal tastes, such as my decision to have movie titles in mind. So I do suggest you go watch either of our edits first. The major differences in our edit. First is in my edit, Radagast is completely gone. Outside of some background appearances and there and back again, we do not cut to him in the forest in my version at all. Gandalf's dialogue transfers into the company setting up camp instead. While I would have liked to remove him altogether, as seen in some of the other edits, it is much harder to get away with amateur VFX that I can create in the higher quality 4K version. The Troll Fight the Cardinal edit goes straight from Keeley jumping out of the trees to the whole company appearing and surrendering. I understand it was done to cut the out to all of the atrocious CG fighting, but to me it simply just doesn't flow well and it makes them just kind of appear out of nowhere. In my edit, they do engage with the trolls for a little bit, but I remove the majority of it and quickly cut to Bilbo freeing the ponies and then getting caught, which I believe better sets up their position and then surrender. The Warg chase scene. In the original film, Radagast provides a distraction for the company to escape a pursuing warg and orc pack. In the Cardinal Cut, he just cuts straight from the troll cave where Bilbo receives stings to Keeley shooting the orc scout behind the rock. To me, the scene change is a bit too drastic. And in my version, I included earlier scenes where they first encounter the wargs, editing out Radagast where I can. Gandalf can teleport? This was one of the strangest cuts in the Cardinal edits. The way it was done seemingly had Gandalf teleport from outside into the cave entrance instantaneously. For my version, I chose to leave the establishing shot that was right afterward, and then cutting to Gandalf, giving him enough off-screen time to make it to the cave entrance. The Lord of the References. One of the extended scenes in The Hobbit involves Bilbo going through the place with the broken sword and wall painting from The Lord of the Rings. I personally don't think this scene really serves any reason in The Hobbit other than, hey look, it's the thing, remember that from the, the other movie that you really liked? I removed it in my version. Homesick Bilbo, after they depart from Rivendell, when they actually reach the cave, in his edit he goes straight from them sleeping to the back door entrance opening, which in turn removes the scene where Bilbo attempts to go back to Rivendell. I understand this was most likely cut for time, but the scene for, to me is critical for Bilbo's character and setting up what Thorin says later after they escape the goblins. In this scene, Bilbo's character arc is being forced to overcome his desire to head back home to safety and learning to fight for others. Removing the scene also makes Thorin's harsh words later on since he overheard Bilbo attempting to leave the company after they escaped the goblins, his words seem far less warranted. Additionally, the scene shows how elven swords glow and function, hinting how Gollum is not just another goblin. Escaping the Goblin Tunnels 
Another jarring edit is where Gandalf comes out to save the dwarves from the goblins. In the cardinal cut, it goes straight from Gandalf appearing directly to them fighting and running away. It was, to me, just way too fast. They go from being on the ground to running away in just a single cut. In my edit, I allow the scene to take its time and develop naturally into them running away while still cutting out the majority of the nonsense. The Eagles and Thorin's Wounds In the original, Thorin faces off against Azog, resulting in him being injured and dying. For some reason, this gets left in the cardinal cut despite him removing Azog. If you remove the whole scene with him being hurt, then I think it would follow that you would remove scenes that show him as such, right? In my version, it is implied that he's just taken away with the eagles without showing him losing his shield or dying. It isn't perfect because you can still see his wounds when they reach the rock, but it has mostly been removed. The Forest of Mirkwood. For my edit, I decided to remove the extended edition bridge scene to get to the disorienting nature of the forest sooner. While doing so, I also removed Bomber being knocked out. The same was done in the Cardinal Cuts, but there were still scenes of him being carried without explanation. The next difference is where I end part one, which is right after Thorn refuses the offer and gets imprisoned in the Elf Dungeon. Here I end an unexpected journey, and there and back again begins. Haggling with Bard. In my edit, I left in more of their dialogue and used it to justify their motive to steal from the Armory later. Entering Lake Town. In the Cardinal edit, he skips straight from them getting into the barrels into Bard's house. In mine, I keep it closer to the original but still cut out Alfred and the spies. Breaking into the Armory. After creating my edits and revisiting the Cardinal cut, this was one of the most shocking cuts made. In his version, after the flashback and Thorin talking, it just cuts straight kind of out of the blue to them stealing from the armory. In mine, I left the scene continue to where the dwarves are disappointed in Bard's weapons. In it, Thorin and Dwalin give each other a look. Then we cut to the armory. I think it presents to the audience that there is a need for proper weapons, explaining why they make the decision to go to the armory and break in. Smaug's attack on Lake Town. One thing that kind of bugged me was how right after Bilbo and Smaug meet in the Cardinal Cut, it skips right to attacking the town. In my edit, I chose to use the scene afterwards where they meet again in the hull, where Smaug explains his intentions to Bilbo, that he has figured him out and he's going to go destroy the Lake Town, removing the whole gold statue thing and just skipping to him breaking out. And while it doesn't look great, I tried to de-gold Smaug and it looks okay, but if, if as long as you don't spend 20 minutes looking at it like I did. And then movie three, the battle of the CGI armies. This is where I mostly stop comparing our edits because as we know, this movie was just a beautiful mess. And so our intentions of how it should have been edited are gonna be very differently and are mostly gonna be due to taste but here is a general overview. In my version, Bilbo is shown as having the Arkenstone. Alfred is completely gone, only showing up in the background. I lean more into Thorin's battle with himself while still cutting out the stuff about dragon sickness. Going into the edit, I decided to show a bit more of how Thorin dies and his significantly reduced battle with the unknown orc leader. And for reference, the way that Cardinal West edited it is that he has Bilbo, right as the battle starts, put on the ring and get knocked out, mostly removing the entire movie itself. Waking up uh, when it, everything is over, essentially. But for me, I just wanted a little bit more, and I kept it close to the major points of the battle and how it progressed into the city and so on while still removing as much as I could from the dumb CGI stuff, especially everything from the extended. This is where most of the my additional runtime for my edit comes from. And then finally, Gandalf's goodbye. My final change was at the end, where I removed Gandalf speaking to Bilbo about the ring. I simply didn't really just like their dialogue, so I cut out part of it, leaving Gandalf's goodbye to Bilbo much merrier and less in an accusatory tone. Plus, there is some apparently lore implications because of the extended editions with the rings that nullify Gandalf's decision to go and research the One Ring in The Lord of the Rings.
the credits. Well, okay, I lied. There is one more change, and that was that I had all three of the credits of for all three movies play at the end. All right, so if my incoherent rambling didn't scare you away and you would still like to watch my version of The Hobbit, you can still go and download it in my Discord, which is still linked below. Select the red triangle roll under the rules and roles. You will then have access to the subscriber only section where there is the channel with the download links and the different versions with the expectations that you should own or have access to an official copy of the films. Conclusion. I will be holding on to the project files for my edit as long as possible, so if you find that there are any issues or you want to suggest any changes, I can still go back and attempt to fix them. And if you haven't already, please do go and watch the Cardinal West video. It is excellent and goes over much of what I didn't cover in this video. I just want to say that his edit was definitely a joy to watch and that I am in no way trying to replace or smear the work that he had put into making it. I believe that all edits are equal and that neither of our versions of The Hobbit is superior to any other. I want to thank Cardinal West for inspiring me to make my own edit. The process of going through editing an entire trilogy on my own has taught me new editing skills that I will hopefully be able to bring over into my more normal Destiny content. I want to thank you for watching and for any suggestions or opinions you might have about my edit of the films. My name is DJ and welcome to Ravenomics.